Well, howdy, y'all. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. All righty. It's like not that big. I always wonder, am I making any sound at all? I get no feedback. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Obviously, um, you are, just to confirm, you saw the sign, in what's new in cybersecurity and information technology. We know some things have been going on. So Mr. Button and Mr. Leatherwood are going to share some information with you. My name is Teresa Thompson. I'm in training and development. I'm your moderator. If you need something, let me know. I'll hunt someone down who can help us. And if we have technical issues, I'll call Corey. I think that's his name. I have this card. Um, one quick reminder, though, if you're in VR and you need CEUs, be sure to go back to where the Phoenix room is. And outside, we have our booth to make sure you get credit for that. And when there are questions and comments, if you would please, I do not mind running around and being Donahue. That said, if these gentlemen want to use this mic, um, they have agreed to repeat your question because we are recording these. And so we want to make sure everyone can hear your questions and get your answers. So gentlemen, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Teresa. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Wonderful. So yeah, the, the best for last. I realize we're what's separating you and that, that garage exit that was wonderful <laughs> yesterday. Um, so you know, IT and cybersecurity, we don't wanna be the shop to say no. We wanna find solutions that you can do these uh, and implement these at work and, and some of these in your home to make things better. Uh, we work very hard to make things simple and uh, applicable so that you can apply these. You know, the uh, uh, Chair Daniel, Chairman Daniel said yesterday to uh, get up, right? So I think what TWC does, all the services we provide and all the great services workforce boards provide is amazing. You know, 18 straight months of job growth. Can, could not have done that without you, right? Unfortunately, the threat actors, the bad guys, they see those as opportunities to defraud you, steal your information, and yes, <laughs> take advantage of it, all right? So <clears throat> I'm gonna go over some prohibited apps and then the real experts are gonna tell you some things that you can do. Right, um, and I'm gonna be brief because this is really, I wanna just introduce you to our, our, our new Chief Information Security Officer who's amazing. Um, but in this short time, I do want you to be intentional, pay attention because there's some information that's gonna really help you immediately, we'll share it with you, right? It might help you at home, it might help you protect uh, when your kids, you know, I have grown kids that are coming over to visit uh, this, this month and to keep you safe and you won't be a victim. Um, we're gonna hopefully equip you with some tools to take away. I'm Chris Budden, I'm Infrastructure Services Director, <laughs> TWC, <laughs> I forgot to say that. So earlier this year, Governor uh, Abbott issued a decree that said, you, thou shalt not do business with state property while using these apps. If you were at the TAG meeting, you've seen this presentation, parts of it with cybersecurity and IT presented, warning you. But I want to dive in a little bit why we did this and what you can do. <clears throat> So this is the statewide model. Uh, following the governor's director directive, the Department of Information Resources and Public Safety uh, developed a plan to guide uh, state entities how to comply. Uh, and we had until February 15th to comply, right? And we did. From, it, from an administrative perspective, there are some back doors that we're working feverishly with the other 28 agencies to plug, uh, and we'll have those plugged this year. 
Okay, so I get asked a lot, what's the big deal, right? Prohibiting technologies on any state issued device. Disallow employees and contractors from conducting state business. Identify sensitive locations, meetings, and personnel, <coughs> and personnel within an agency that could be exposed to the said prohibited technologies. Uh, implementing network-based restrictions and coordinate the incorporation of any additional technology that poses a threat. So in other words, it's not a one and done. This list might change later on this year. <coughs> any exceptions have to be approved by Mr. Cerner and then reported accordingly to uh, DIR during a certain uh, time period. So very strict guidelines and, and just kind of want to outlay the seriousness of, of what's going on here. So what we did at TWC was we just shrunk our tax surface, right? So if we just and eliminate BYLD uh, from the um, equation, it makes things a little simpler. And we decided to just issue state issued devices to all our employees who needed to do work uh, after hours. And for the folks that are on the call, let's give them state phones, okay? So that made it easier. That didn't address all the concerns right away, okay? Again, there's some back doors that we're, we're still gonna address. Uh, no personal devices are allowed in sensitive areas. For example, TWC has top IRS FTI data, so we can't have personal devices in those sensitive areas. We're coming up with lockers and maybe some signage, so we can uh, let uh, folks know before they get into a TWC facility and just kind of set expectations, right? We all want to be intrusive, but at the same time, we want to be com compliant. Does that make sense? What? Uh, come on in, come on in. <clears throat> so one of the things that helped us was just a great communication strategy. We had several meetings with uh, cybersecurity experts, the uh, CISO, the um, uh, our attorneys, our business program areas, uh, business ops, and the program divisions. And we tried to do a lot of what-if scenarios and what we could do. Uh, we developed a FAQ page, some of which I'll share with you in a little bit. Uh, and we held a virtual IT all staff meeting. We had a distributed email that went out to all of TWC employees. And we created a SharePoint site that's uh, a live site, meaning it's continually changing. <clears throat> Here are some of the FAQs. Well, let's see. Uh, does the policy affect vendors who join TWC uh, created teams? External users such as vendors joining a TWC Teams meeting will be required to acknowledge they do not have TikTok or any of the prohibited apps on their devices while in the TWC meeting. I'm sorry that's so small. <clears throat> Is it true we cannot dial into MS Teams meetings with on our personal devices? Yes. Remember, we removed that from the equation. We're giving out uh, company-issued devices. <clears throat> I'm going to go into the, a little bit more on the why in a little bit. <clears throat> I'm getting an agency phone, but, the, but is it okay to call in sick using my personal phone? So that's fine. Again, you want to have a little discretion, right? We don't want to impede business. But again, we want to make sure you're compliant and safe. We got to follow the law, but we also want to make sure you're safe because the services, again, that you provide, the bad guys, the threat actors, they're trying to grab those services to uh, do bad stuff with them, right? Pose as you, uh, instead of getting the funds that TWC is sending, we might be paying fraudsters and whatnot. And, then <clears throat> and we'll go into that a little later and, and Lance could uh, give you some really good information on that. <clears throat> I get calls after hours and, and use my personal phone. Is this still allowed? Again, we are giving everyone TWC issues phones, so that takes that off the equation. Does wearable devices count as a personal device? Answer is yes. You know, I know there are different brands and uh, they range in sophistication, but if they can tell your heartbeats per second and your breathing per second and whatnot, yeah, those are pretty sophisticated. They got all kind of information they're collecting on you. So they could be a, 
used against you, used as bots, and do a lot of bad stuff? So the answer is yes, short answer. <clears throat> what about using my personal device and MFA to authenticate? So multi-factor authentication, you should all be using that. If, it's, if not, if you're not, you want to talk to this guy, <laughs> right? That's when you're doing your banking. So that's acceptable, okay? Uh, what if I use TikTok, uh, what if I use Facebook and get TikTok messages from Facebook Reels? So I know some of the boards uh, use that for their business and for outreach. That's acceptable. Facebook Reels using TikTok. I had TWC. Probably want to have your conversation with your boss. Why are you using TikTok? I mean, why are you using Facebook at work anyway? I don't know. These are actual questions. We're just answering. Don't. I'm, I'm not judging. <clears throat> so some of the questions we might have not all the answers to, just like in your last sessions. That's why the uh, page is dynamic. It's still being, you know, we get some really, really good questions. One of them, I have a, a authenticated VPN that has two levels of protection at home. And if so technical, we're still trying to figure it out. We just said no, you know, because we couldn't keep up. Uh, so some of the questions are very sophisticated. Uh, th the key here is we want to have a reasonable measuring stick, right? We don't want you to impeach your service delivery. We realize when people come to your places of work seeking service, they're in a desperate need. They don't have a job. They're trying to eat, right? <laughs> so we're trying to use that stick. We don't want you to impeach your service delivery, but you want to be compliant. You want to make sure if you're getting those child care services, right, while you're looking for work, that you're getting those checks and someone else posing as you is not getting those checks, right? Um, and again, re reduce suspending BYLD, uh, reduced our footprint, okay? So TikTok, right? Um, there is more than apps on the prohibited list in addition to TikTok. TikTok is the most in the use. TikTok uh, is what you're familiar with. But there's more dangerous ones on the list that we're not gonna go into this different conversation. But TikTok, uh, if your family members have TikTok and use it, and again, they should not be in the same room. They should not be in the same vicinity as you while you're working from home, right? And also, well, we'll get, we'll cover that. And I'm going to wrap it up because I don't want to take all the time because Lance has a lot of good stuff I want to show you. Uh, so we put in some blacklist den deny on certain IPs and some uh, ingress and egress, right? Never really like telling the how in these type forums. It probably wouldn't be wise, and, and Lance would probably scold me right after and <laughs> tell me why. Um, but this is the list as it currently stands today. And then there's a URL at the end of the presentation that, that'll have this in there. Uh, this might be dynamic, meaning uh, later on this year it might change, okay? Uh, and this is just a disclaimer. And the words might change, but by joining this meeting, you, you, you uh, attest that you don't have any sensitive, uh, you, you're not using other prohibited apps on, on, the, on the list while joining this meeting, you know, something like that. All right, so the last thing I want to just highlight a few things. Why is such a big deal with TikTok? You know, TikTok gathers a lot of data um, by tracking what type of content you like, um, your airlines tickets, your contacts list, uh, your credit card information, the messages you share. But what you probably didn't realize, whether you're using the app or not, whether you're using the app or not, it collects this, right? See, see the concern here? Um, in, two in 20, if you had an uh, operating system 18 months ago that was coming with 2010 still, TikTok came on by default. It was installed by default. So if you brought, brought a new computer at home, it had it. So you might want to check that, even though you probably haven't used it, or if you have, I don't know, but you might want to take action to get rid of that. <clears throat> uh, TikTok uses things, uh, something called pixels to collect a lot of information. Uh, these pixels are harvested by a lot of bad guys and are all, all over the dark web, okay? And your information is being pilfered. Uh, TikTok 
doesn't use secure web browsing. Now at the workforce boards and TWC, you guys are savvy enough to know that HTTPS, TikTok doesn't do that. So it just makes it a little easier for the hackers to just go to TikTok and take advantage. Okay, so uh, enough said, TikTok is bad. And remember, <laughs> TikTok is not the worst app on the list. Uh, we have an app that used to be at the uh, uh, top of the security list called Kapersky. Kapersky is based out of Russia, right? And you know, you know the relationship we have, it's, it's a little interesting with some of the organized activities and it's trying to uh, mitigate that gets to be a little challenging. TikTok itself is based out of China with a company called ByteDance, but that's out of China. Same reasons, you know, so again, these are some dangerous apps. Uh, so what can you do, right? I said all that stuff to <laughs> scare you. Well, there are some things you can do. And we just like you, we realize you don't have unlimited unlim budgets and uh, IT could come to your, your house and place of the work and IT is so strapped and security is so strapped, but there's some things you can do. You can utilize some of the tools that you might be paying for already, all right? Even at home. How many of you realize that your home version of Office has a Windows Defender and a proxy server that you just got to turn on, right? Um, stay vigilant. Uh, attend one of this gentleman's uh, monthly cybersecurity program awareness. It's very good. Uh, and work with your, your cybersecurity and IT teams. Those are things you can do right away. I'm going to wrap it up here. So this is uh, some of the products at Microsoft. And again, I work for TWC, not Microsoft, but I know your license, a lot of you have pieces of this. So some of the stuff that you haven't turned on, you just gotta flip a switch. Now, work with your change advisory people and, and do your testing, you don't wanna break anything. But I'm saying cost-wise, it's gonna be low cost, right? And if you don't have it, since you have parts of the Microsoft equation, it's not gonna be full price. You'll get some uh, discounted pricing. Does that make sense? I'm going to wrap it up because, um, yeah, so and some of these tools should not be, um, you know, you should be f pretty familiar, again. Um, DPS and DR has been charged with monitoring the prohibited apps that pose a threat. Um, this is where the list is. We have someone that monitors this each month, and we'll reach out to you, and we'll continue to work with uh, the boards and share information, okay? <clears throat> So I'm wrapping up my piece of the presentation, um, but I want to introduce uh, this gentleman here who's been in state and federal information security and cybersecurity for over 20 years. This is uh, one of the guys you want on your side when you have cybersecurity events. He's uh, well security minded, he can help you find solutions, right? You want to listen to this guy. He's uh, been running the uh, <clears throat> information security uh, awareness campaign for more than five years, uh, showing you all the great information each month over month. He's been leading the GRC team for uh, three and a half years. He has a master's in information security. He's uh, has several credentials, including CISSP, and cloud security certification. Uh, and, and just an amazing guy. I want to introduce my friend and, and our new Te Texas Workforce Commission CISO, Lance Leatherwood. <clears throat> now, I told Chris I wanted a smoke machine with that introduction, but apparently <laughs> didn't happen. All right, so I just want to say that this slide, all it does is make me feel really old. <laughs> so, and then, uh, it, my master's is so old that we had, it was information assurance back then. We didn't even have cybersecurity yet. So <laughs> that's how bad we, it is. And I, I like, uh, Chris was talking about Kapersky. I worked for Department of Defense for years. We loved Kapersky. We used them all the time because they were the guys that were actually creating all the bad stuff. <laughs> so which way am I pushing up or down here? There we go. Oh, wrong one. Okay. All right. 
what I'd like to talk today about everybody is I hear everybody saying, you know, money, things, and everything. The most important person that, our most important defense we have is you, the end user. And we're going to kind of walk through some things, talk about, uh, cover some of the stuff that Chris talked about, and, you know, kind of expand on some of that. But the first thing we always get in cybersecurity, oh, I had something, and it really happened. We're like, do you click the link? No, no. <laughs> Well, we, we're looking right here. We can see where somebody clicked the link. But, <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, security was, uh, recent breaches. So, last, uh, last pass, DevOps engineer had a personal home computer that was hacked and implanted with key logging malware. Okay. So, we're talking DevOps. This is a guy that knows what he's doing should have a, a great understanding, but most importantly, he probably has admin privileges on his system. So that's how he clicked on something with those privileges. They were able to take that, put a key logger onto his system, and then take everything uh, that he was saying and, and taking that information. So what ha happened with LastPass is he gave up a lot of their people's information. It, they didn't get into the actual operating systems, but they got also a lot of the design documents. So now either the competitors or the bad guys that are trying to do it have this because this guy uh, didn't pa uh, pay attention to what he was doing, was clicking through, click and clicked on it and had his information taken. Uh, Reddit, after success successfully obtaining a single, a single employee's credentials, bad actors gained access to Reddit's DevOps environment. And again, we're able to go in and steal their basic code and everything that they, ha they have to make their business competitive. So what happened here is, once again, one person didn't pay attention to what they're doing, had their credentials stolen. That's the biggest thing that uh, all uh, your hackers are going after now is credentials. They want your credentials. They're going to do anything they can to get those from you because we've done a great job putting up all the barriers on the edge. We have uh, IPSs, which are your uh, protection systems, your information protection systems. They're all out on the perimeter. We have firewalls blocking things come from coming in, coming out. Uh, we monitor things. We have, like we were talking about Windows Defender. We have that all the way down from the outer reaches of your network, all the way down to your computer, trying to stop the bad guys. So, man, we're not going to do that. We're not going. We're going to send you an email, and we're going to make you give us your information. That's the whole thing. So, Mailchimp's another thing. Uh, claims that a threat actor was able to access system after social engineering. And then I put in comment, "This is their second attack in six months." It's like, come on, people, <laughs> what are y'all doing out there? Mailchimp, get your act together because we use it. University of Texas uses it. Everybody uses it. And these are big companies that spend a lot of money on security, a lot of money on technology. So what's failing? They're people. Can you just real quick, um, the very first mention about the employee, how did that employee figure out that they were being tracked with the key loggers? So what happened is they know that, that so, what, so what happened with them, and more than likely, so what happened is an investigation, they, what they'll do is what we've done in the past is you'll go in, you'll look for where the information came from, who had access to it, then you'll start checking their computers. So when they did a forensic investigation on their computer, they found the key loggers, and that's how they did it. So the end user probably never knew they had it until they did a forensic investigation on it. So the only, so to your question, I think what you're asking, if you ever want to know, if you think your computer's really running slow, you're having to reboot a lot of stuff, you probably got a virus. You probably want to go ahead and check it or run a scan, you know, all your defenders has scans and stuff. So that's what you want to do is if you think that you're having issues. PayPal, think these people would have their act together. But once again, unauthorized parties were able to access PayPal customer account using stolen login credentials. So you're like, well, how do you get stolen? Uh, all these big companies have lists, hundreds and hundreds of lists. And uh, they're able, uh, you'll find them on the dark web. We at TWC have access to dark web information. They'll notify us if we, uh, our information ends up out there. And so we're constantly looking for people that have ours. One of the things that I, when I first started working for T TWC, we had a, um, uh, had a email campaign against us and what, they were breaking in and they were gaining access to email accounts. And the reason they were doing it with passwords that were off the list that was stolen 10 years ago. So first thing was, 
how come you haven't changed your password in 10 years? That's what I want to know. <laughs> so that's, that's one of those things that you want to know. And Dropbox, another thing. Everybody loves Dropbox. Yeah, it's, it's a great tool uh, when, when you control it, but from a cybersecurity standpoint, we always we don't like it because once it goes in Dropbox, we don't know what happens to it, you know, and we can never track your information after that. So again, uh, the uh, API credentials were stolen after the credentials were unlittally handed over via a fake Circle CI login page. Well, that, that's, all that told us was the developer that was doing that, he, he, uh, he uh, I, let me use the careful one, the person used uh, 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 access to a web page all the time. So what they did, the bad guy did is, well, I'm gonna set, set up a fake page and then I'm gonna have you put your credentials and I'm gonna steal your credentials and then we're gonna go attack you. So that's, that's how these things happen. Any Air Force people out there? <laughs> oh, okay. Then I'll talk slow. Uh, <laughs> no, no, we, we, we love the almost military Air Force people. <laughs> so, <laughs> our friend uh, Jack here, he's a 20 year old member of the Massachusetts Air National Guard. He was arrested by federal authorities for taking information out of a secure information facility, a SCIF. And you ask yourself, this is one of the most secure facilities that the U.S. could have. How did this happen? 21-year-old kid. And it had nothing to do with technology. Everything that, that failed was lack of supervision. Had a young guy working in the middle of the night, nobody around, he could do what he wanted. And the thing I can understand, because I've worked in these environments, he was printing out documents. You have to use a password to get into these. How come nobody ever went and checked to see who was printing what? I know back when I, you know, and I'm using being you know, back in my day, but back in my day, we had once a month, we ran a, ran a uh, went and looked at see who was printing what and how much they printed. Uh, and then a physical security. He was able to fold those documents up, put them in his pocket and walk out. Now, I'm not saying that at TWC, we're not gonna chase people down the hall, tackle them, check to see what's in their pockets. But you always want to be aware that for security, you know, just kind of pay attention. If you see somebody walking out with loads of things that come out of a secure area, you want to make sure why they're doing that. Um, and then the biggest thing, he was given an admin account. He was basically given almost a God account, uh, you know, a domain account, where he had access to all this information. One of the things that we always preach is the least amount of access you need to do your job. And this young man was given an account where he could go through anything. Now, it, the stuff that he stole, you know, was available to people with that. But once again, this guy was really a network tech. So why would he have access to that, th that type of documentation? So always, you know, that, that need to know and the least amount of privilege possible. That's what we, you know, we preach. So, so, so once again, they failed in making sure that his, his credentials did not exceed what he needed to do his job. Uh, and then failed to uh, properly protect their documents. Once again, they made it easy for him to steal. Uh, you, you know, everybody, you have SharePoint, you have, you can password protect your own documents. If you have sensitive documents and stuff, protect them in some way. All right, threat intelligence, situation awareness. What's wrong with chat GPT? Everybody's jumped, a, you know, a few weeks ago, everybody jumped on the chat GPT bandwagon. Coolest saying since sliced bread, everybody loves it, everybody wants to use it. And one of the things that I always tell people, if you're signing in and you're using something and they're not charging you, you're you're the what they're you're you're being traded on. They're taking your information, they're giving it. Chat GPT at this time, what they're wanting is you to give all your information to them, and then they're gonna take that information and build it into their tool and then sell it back to you after it was already your information. But, uh, and the thing, I mean, I, I've read about it. I can't wait to actually get to use it because you could just basically normal human language, talk to it, it will write code for you. Um, it, so it, you know, it's, it's a really cool thing. All the people that work for me, they all want to use it because it's, it's fun. It's going to be, and, and in probably in two or three years, it's going to become mainstream. A lot of, uh, a lot of the security, uh, appliances that we're going to use are going to incorporate this type of technology to help us better fight the guys that are already using this technology. 
Uh, the one thing that we, uh, it does that really scares us is it creates malware. You can take a piece of malware out there, you can run it through there. We already had one of our guys tested. He took a piece of malware and was basically ran it two cycles through JetTPT, two basic uh, corrections, and had a piece of malware that we could not identify. And it only took about 30 minutes. So what happens is you got a bad guy. So I don't know if all y'all know how it works. Is we work everything off signatures. If we see bad stuff come in and it has a certain uh, um, checksum on it, uh, we check that and we'll say uh, that matches a bad piece of code. We're going to block it. We're going to throw it out. We'll get rid of it. So what they do is they do just enough to make that checksum just a little bit different that we don't recognize it. So, but then what we'll do is we'll get it, when it hits your computer, uh, we work with Microsoft, we provide them information constantly on things that we see in our environment, and uh, we'll, we'll identify that. We'll see that piece of code, we'll send it to them and say, okay, start blocking this one. Well, they have a thing now, well, it's, it's been around for a long time, but it's really easy to do now, it's polymorphous code. So once it hits your system, it's gonna immediately change itself and move to the next system. So we'll catch it on the one, we won't catch it on the next one. When we finally catch it on that one, it's probably more 15 more times. We will never catch it. So that's why it really, really scares us. And then again, if you use this for your business, you have to share your business's information. And one of the things that like uh, we, we know people that want to you know, do it for heavy analytics and stuff like that. So if you're using a database, you have to give up your database structure so they know how to take that information and, and let you use, you know, like I said, human speak language to create your code. So just be very aware that it's a kind of a, while it's gonna be really great someday, it's a little scary right now. All right, this kid, I'm gonna hire him someday. I <laughs> get his address because he was able to get 51 boxes of popsicles. This is my guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he broke into his mom's Amazon Prime account. And that kind of goes back to what Chris was saying earlier. We're talking about when you're working in your business or you're, you're doing working at home, you're doing those things. These kind of things are going on behind you and you don't know what's being picked up. This kid was smart enough to pick up his mom's Amazon uh, password. I mean, good for him. Well, not really. I mean, I'm kind of proud of him because <laughs> he's, he's good. I'm going to get him in my field. But this guy's awesome. But that's one of the things that we always tell people, do not let anybody in your home use your work computer, your work phones, all those things. Those are all very basic because you never know what they're gonna lo uh, load on your computer. My favorite story was a uh, guy told me he woke up one morning and his son had taken his finger and was trying to open his phone <laughs> so he could play a game. And that's what he woke up to. <laughs> and it because the kid realized, well, I can just get my dad's fingerprint and away I go. <laughs> and so kids are smart and they will trip you up. All right, so this, uh, you know, this is some of the st standard stuff that we walk through. We talk about, you know, selecting the, uh, you know, how the bad guy wants to uh, target people. One thing I tell TWC, and I'm sure with workforce boards, think of yourself as a giant piggy bank. You give out money. You give out resources. You give out things that people ha that have value. That means somebody wants it, and somebody's going to want to steal it. So just be aware of that. So you know, we always talk about. Uh, <laughs> they, you know, they're going to um, uh, pick you out and then they're going to figure out what they're going to uh, figure out what type of email will really work go with your business back to that chat GPT. So all the things that we've taught you over the last few years about how to identify a bad email, they now have them, to, it says create an email to do this, gets rid of all the bad grammar, all the misspellings, looks real, it's going to select all the logos off of you know, Chase Bank or whatever, it's gonna look real. So <laughs> everything that we've taught you is now kind of nullified. So you have to start really being aware yourself. Was I expecting it? Do I bank with these people? Do I really need to click on these? Um, one of the first things that TWC that I dealt with was a piece of ransomware that came in part, as part of a FedEx. And it says you have a FedEx delivery. We went down, we found the computer it was coming from, we, we isolated it. And the question was, were you expecting FedEx? No. Okay, well, why, why'd you click on it? Well, I thought maybe I did. And I thought, well, that's crazy. Then I went and visited my daughter's house. She had a bunch of boxes sitting on the table. So she goes, I don't know, I ordered it. And I was like, oh, well, I guess there are people out there that don't know what they order. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of tough. But anyway, 
Uh, another thing that the organizational wide announcements, you know, they'll always send something out and say, click on this to sign up. Everybody in the organization's doing it. And once again, this is generally, they're trying to get your credentials. That's the biggest thing. Or, you know, back in the old days before we had real good uh, endpoint protection, uh, they would, you know, you'd have a virus or worm set from that. And then uh, user specific alerts, you probably heard about this, uh, you know, whaling, fishing, things like that. They're gonna have something specific to you, you know, and, or they're trying to say, go get something from like your boss. Hey, you need to hurry up and do this, click on it. And the, just be aware too that the big thing that they always try to do is, uh, you know, elicit some type of emotional response out of you. Like, oh, I have to hurry up and do it, or I'm gonna get in trouble, or, or wow, this could be really bad. And then once they set the hook, They've got you, and then I like some of these uh, down here. Organizations have had at least one individual who fell victim to phishing attempt by a CISA, so the, the national team. So add eight out of 10, so that's a lot. I will tell you that we run uh, phishing campaigns inside TWC all the time. Uh, we average about a 3% uh, click rate, so we, we figure we catch about 3% of our users. So actually, I think that's pretty good that, you know, well, we actually ran one this last one, and I thought, I, the guy that develops it for us, I looked at it, I was like, that's the crappiest looking email that you've ever sent out. You're not gonna catch anybody with it. And it was for uh, a line of credit for home mortgages. And it was like, oh, you need to sign these documents. We, we got 28% 28 of the people that we sent it to clicked on it. Wow. And it's like, why on earth? Were you, you know, and that, I always ask myself, are you, are you actually doing something with your home loan right now or not? But no, but you clicked on it, okay. So, you know, and they get mad at us because we make them do training. Was this locally? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is a robust housewife economy right now? Is that what that Not is? really. I mean, <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> you know what? Now you gave me an idea for a new one. <laughs> well, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to do one now with uh, low interest rates. <laughs> Now, now, I've told people, too, that, you know, if you want to catch me one, tell me I'm going to get a free Whataburger coupon, and I'll be clicking on that somebody again in no time. Free goodies. Yeah. <laughs> and then once they get in, so I like the 70% of all the uh, files and links ca uh, containing malware were not blocked by network border protection. So that's, you know, what we're telling you is we're looking for those signatures. We, we block, I think we, I checked last month, we blocked 32 million pieces of <laughs> information coming into a T just TWC. And that means that many more got in. That's scary to us, that's terrifying. So once again, it's up to the end user to go, you know, I'm not getting a mortgage, why would I click on this? And especially when it looks so horrible. I mean, <laughs> it's like, it makes no sense. So at any rate, and then 15% uh, of all uh, malicious attachments or links were not blocked by endpoint protections. Again, we're, you know, we, we try really hard, but we miss stuff. And then, um, and then within the first 10 minutes of receiving a malicious email, 84% of the employees take the bait. So uh, pretty much, you know, people are clicking through their email as soon as they, they click on it. And lots of people, and you know, and I, I worry about it even for myself. You know, you get rushed and you're looking for something. You're like, oh, what is that? And you click, oh, no, and then you just move on. So, you know, just be aware. And then 13% uh, of target employees reported the phishing attempts. The reason it's important for you to report phishing attempts is because I was talking about those signatures. We feed those into the systems to help block them. So, you know, we, we probably handle, I think last month we, we handled about 600 phishing emails. Just, and that's, that's just the people that reported them. So we, we deal with that a lot. And then what we did, and, and what we do here at TWC. Yes. Excuse me. It could be anything. It could okay. be, yeah, mainly email is, but uh, I, you know, we didn't even uh, didn't even talk, and that is a good point. So when you're browsing the internet, mm -hmm. and all those little things off to the side that they want you to click on to try to buy some, a good portion of those are going to take you to a bad site. So just always be aware of that. Having said that, let me ask you. So do you recommend that I operate as a TWC employee with um, TWC devices in VPN? I'm a security guy 100% of the time. So, does VPN, <laughs> so my core, I guess my ultimate question is, does VPN help with that 70% or not? 
Right. They're, they have built-in blocks as well, and they right. won't let you. They won't let you go to some sites. That's. But once again, you know, it's it's only as good as the protection that we have in it. Yeah. So. We have one more question. Yes, I'm sorry. Exactly, and see, and that's you. You have to stop yourself and do that. The worst I've ever been, and it was, you know, thankfully as I was transitioning from the federal world to, to the state, was uh, one of the contractors we had. Uh, one of the pr people in HR, a small company, said, "Hey, we need all your W twos." She sent them out. Oh. Nobody ever thought about it. Uh, about five months later, in April, people started filing their taxes. Found out that all their taxes had already been uh, filed on. And it took them, you know, it took them a long time to get get that straight. So once again, the, you know, the, they're looking, you know, it was like you were saying, at the end of the day, HR uh, needs information. Yeah, we're, and they're going to find a way to get your money. Yes, ma'am. So that was about eight years ago. So it was eight years ago, April. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. No. <laughs> Right, as long as you didn't activate that, yeah, you're, you're okay. Now, I will tell you, I, I got myself in trouble one time. I bought my wife a gift at one of those little kiosks at the mall, and immediately I got notified that my credit card had been used, and I thought, well, this is weird. And then so I called, and it was actually my bank, and then my wife accused me of never buying her gifts. That's why they were alerting. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it, you, you, so you could go both ways on that one, but I appreciated the fact that they – they noticed that it was a different type of a purchase. And so yeah, all those things you have to worry about because especially with like chat GPT and things like that, now they're, they're simulating all that and they're hoping there, there's actually, there's one, uh, one of the, the uh, attacks that they're using now is they're constantly sending uh, MFA, how they're bidding MFA, which is supposed to be, you know, the greatest thing is they're constantly sending updates to phones and saying, select your MFA, you know, log in with your MFA, log in with your MFA. And what they're hoping people will do is they'll hit that and it'll send their password and they'll catch it. And they're just doing it by annoying them to the point where they're like, okay, click, just leave me alone. And so that's one of the attacks that they're using now. So, Okay, and then we're going to talk about, you know, strong network border protections. Once again, your IPSs, your firewalls, all those things. Uh, configure email servers to utilize protocols. Uh, at TWC, we do that where we know, we recognize if somebody's using a fake URL, things like that, we'll block that, those things. And then incorporate uh, deny lists. And we do that, we have deny lists. We work with uh, the state uh, all the time, providing them here, please block these things. We're seeing these in our environment, please block them. And then once again, please, report it to somebody let somebody know so they can get that information in there because once again we're you know fighting an up, uphill battle so every time we get one of those we can identify it and then we can put a block in for it and then uh, protect the waters you know once again these are all you know pretty pretty standard you know enforce your multi-factor uh, review and reduce the number of accounts with access to critical data once again back to that need to know you know everybody that needs to uh, has that uh, restrict administrative password sharing. That's one of those things that's tough. Uh, a lot of shared accounts out there. Uh, it's, you know, you don't want to make everybody an administrator. So it kind of goes, it's counterintuitive. You don't want to make everybody an administrator, but everybody needs access to it to be able to do certain things. So, you know, it's, it's tough. You just, you have to, you know, kind of figure out what that happy medium for you. And then um, add protection at endpoints. We, we do that as, and everybody that does that is, doing the best they can. All right, if you ever see this, 
start of a very bad day for you. Uh, there's five types of uh, crypto ransomware, and uh, so we'll go through them. The crypto ransomware or the encryptor, so that's the, the standard one that everybody sees. It locks your computer up and wants your money from you. Uh, lockers, they don't tell you that it's lock your computer. And so you're just sitting there with a locked computer that you can now use for a boat anchor. Uh, scareware, uh, we get a lot of that. We see a lot of that where you'll get an email saying that uh, we've either kidnapped somebody, uh, we um, have people, you know, we, you know, we've seen you, we, we had a whole thing where uh, we had an email campaign that went through and said, uh, we have records of you uh, going to inappropriate websites on your work computer. We're going to send that to your boss, you know. So there's all kinds of them that are out there. Uh, uh, <laughs> and then uh, Docsware and uh, leak, uh, Leakware. This is one that uh, kind of you know bothers me. Is that they'll you know you think about your your executive directors, people like that. Uh, you know, they get, they get upset, you know, somebody gets upset, they start leaking their home addresses, start leaking their children's names, you know, th these are the ones that, you know, really make you uh, upset. And then ransomware as a service. You don't even have to be any good anymore. You can just purchase it. You get mad at somebody, go out and buy some ransomware, you send an email to somebody you don't like, and there you go. You're in business. So. If it wasn't the market, it There you go. And then, uh, so just so you know, the attack, so the ransomware attack cycle, you know, is the attack. Discovery, it's really not hard. My computer's locked up. Uh, then they're going to negotiate with you, and that's where you send them money. And then at the end, post-event, you hope that you get your, all your information back. And I'll tell you now, all ransomware now is what they do is they come uh, lock up your ransom, uh, lock up your data, Plus, they take a copy of it and put it on a dark web. So once you're once that happens, you're in pretty bad shape. And ransomware is costly, depending on um, depending on what how it, what happens. It can be anywhere from four point three to nine point four million, and that's just not what you pay to get your stuff back. That's like uh, you, we, there's a state agency that. They had a ransomware attack. They went out, they cleaned it up. They had to call in all kinds of support, brought everything back on line, uh, missed one of the systems that had the ransomware, reinfected their systems. It took them about three weeks to get through and millions of dollars to get that all cleaned up, so. Yeah. So that says that PWC has been hit with ransomware. How long ago was that? My very first week working. And it was, it was, uh, yeah. And then on top of that, everybody else in the office at the time uh, was at one of these events. And since I was a new guy and I was there all by myself, and the only reason that we were actually able to stop it quickly was that there were people actually, they were in chair drives and they were actually watching the, 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 uh, in, the attack happen as it took place. They saw the files being encrypted and they're like, oh, that's not right. So <laughs> we immediately isolated those, shut them down, and because TWC does do a very good job of backing up their data, that we were able to go back just a few hours, back up the data, and, and move on. It was fairly inconsequential, except for I lost about a year's worth of life that day. <laughs> you know. But you said that a lot of times, though, with ransomware, they make copies and put it on the dark web. Should, should I be worried that some of my information may be on the dark web? Oh, it's already there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's still, it, yeah, you, all you're getting is the credit monitoring to kind of make you feel good about it. I mean, that's, like I said, they pulled, you know, they pulled uh, things. I, I will tell uh, I, uh, what is it, I am pond, or pwned, what is, I forget the word of it. There's, there's a site that you can go and see whether your data's been, and I believe it's, I, I, I've been pond. Yeah, I'll, I'll get I've the name. Pond. Yeah, and it'll tell you whether you have data out or not. What I was actually, uh, I was happy because I checked it. My old TWC work account had been. And fortunately, we switched over. So I was like, okay, thanks. And I, so I checked that about probably about once every six months, just check to make sure that not, uh, a couple of, you know, I still have an old uh, AOL account out there that yeah, they can have that one. But do you have so. to enter personal information to access that? I'm sorry? I've been gone. Do you have to enter personal information? 
don't, no, you can just do like your email address. Yeah. 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 And there's services out there, like I have AT&T, uh, and one of the security apps that comes with AT&T, they actually take the kind of stuff and they Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't have that. now the only problem is if you're still using "I love Fluffy" as your password, <laughs> then yeah, you've got a problem. All right, countermeasures to ransomware: use technologies to block those malicious payloads. But once again, you know we can't catch every one. Uh, implement uh, administrative controls like policies, procedures, and awareness training. Here we all are. Good job and have reliable backups in different geolocations. So as a business, but even as your, even as your home computer, uh, computers, Google, almost all your things allow you to do backups now. It's, it's a pretty smart thing to do. And what can you do? The most effective tool we have is the trained end user. Be aware of bad actors that never sleep. They're constantly out to get you. And know the bad guy is gonna try to manipulate you, create an emotional reaction. So when you're getting those emails, things like that, phone calls, you know, even have you know a lot of phone calls now where they're trying to get you to do something. The best one I got was my mom was arrested in Mexico. I was couldn't <laughs> wait to call her and let her know. <laughs> All right. So this, in summary, the the best thing that you can do is on your home computer, work computer, your phones, everything, update them, turn them on, let, make sure you're getting all the patches and everything that you're you're supposed to. Even though two-factor authentication can be beat. It's still probably your best protection, or well, it is your best protection right now. Employee education, uh, you know, and if you guys at your boards, if you ever need any help, uh, we have team, we have, uh, you know, my team can help you put together some information or any type of training. We can always do that. Uh, data backup is huge. I mean, as you can tell you, we don't want to, uh, you know, we don't want to lose data. We want to back up pretty regular. Uh, password review. Make sure that all your passwords are good. Uh, and log out completely. I don't know how many people, do y'all not log out at night? I mean, I guess I'm an old school guy, but every night I log out of my computer and I reboot it. So, you know, I, I, you know maybe it's just because that's the way I was raised, I don't know. But that's one of the things, if somebody does have, you know, some connection to your system or something, that's a way to break it. That's a way to, you know, anything that's in your volatile memory you know, your RAM, anything like that, it's immediately erased, so you don't have to worry about that. So I would always say, you know, make sure you log out, reboot your computer at least once a week. Uh, keep your software updated, avoid suspicious links, and use VPNs. VPN. <laughs> all right, that's all I have. Any questions? <laughs> yes, sir. No, no, at TWC we already know, no, right now. And I, and, and I will tell you that one of the things that if you have somebody in your, your environment come to you and ask for that, my first question, are you a research facility? Because that's really where it's at right now. If you're not doing research, you know, then you don't really need to be messing with that stuff for quite yet. Well, you know why? Do you know why Samsung did that? They got hit. Oh well, I, I believe yeah. they got hit. No. So what happened yeah. is that they, they, they did get hit. No, they didn't get hit. They, their employees gave up their information. They used ChatGPT. They loaded their coding information on how to make those chips that are highly regulated. It's against the law to export them outside the U.S. And they still have a job. Well, 
I don't, maybe not, I don't know. We haven't heard that. <laughs> but, but so back to what we're saying is you're having to give up your information. So they said, oh, well, this will help us write code faster. This will help us do our documents quicker. Let's use it. And then they gave up the whole design of their chips. And yeah. so now our adversaries, Russia, China, everybody has that information. And remember, chat GPT, that intellectual property, when you share that and use that app, that's their intellectual property. So you're giving away that. And again, we, we want to embrace technology. We just want to make sure we embrace it safely. And some stuff, chat GPT is a game changer, let's admit. Yes, ma'am. So a year, two years from now, we'll be a lot secure. Yeah, so we, with the uh, prohibited apps, that's coming from the governor. So if there are state agencies, they're getting those same communications. But we've shared what we were doing. And all the, the, the 28 agencies, we meet regularly each month and we share. Because we're all scrambling trying to block the back doors. You know, we can't go into the, what those are, but we're all scrambling trying to block them. The administrative policy went in effect uh, February the 15th. And we made that a, a aware of what we would be doing and with the signage and Yes, ma'am. You were recommending to log down and reboot. So do you do it daily? Is that mm -hmm. something that I should be doing with the CWC device every day or at least once a week? At least once a week. At least once I'm, a week. I'm, I'm, I'm just hyper vigilant about that. Oh, okay. That's yeah, so just me. Reboot once a week. Hmm? Reboot once a week, so log off. Yeah, yeah, log off at, the, at night, but reboot at least once a week. I, I log off, reboot every night. So yeah. that's, that's just me. TWC staff members who request a cell phone, we're entertaining that. Okay. They just work with their director and we'll, we'll order <coughs> order the phones. Or a cell phone, whichever one. Um, yeah, whichever one. Both of those are, are still TWC devices. The soft phone, we, we include that and we can protect those better. Well, <laughs> that's a really good question. I would encourage you to uh, ask for a MiFi if you're doing it. You know, some, some boards, are uh, their, their uh, protection is a lot stri stringent than, than others. You know, each board is very different and unique. Uh, but just to make sure that TWC, I would encourage you to get a MiFi. Okay, yeah. And, that's right. the and, and, okay. and to your reaction, yeah, each, each board is going to have rules about how you connect to their yeah. networks. Okay. And don't trust their guest networks because those aren't as protected as their other networks. So. Yes, networks. Yeah. Even at TWC, don't use them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Do we have one over here? Yes, ma'am. No, they're not. We, I, I've, I use KeyPass. I've used KeyPass for a long time, but that's that's me again. You know, you know, each one of them is going to have an issue, or you know, or, or you know, generally they're good, but you know, it, they're they're good until they get hacked. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you. I just want to reiterate. I, I know I have about thirty people at the end. Right before you leave, it was pretty good. I thought the questions were pretty engaging. Lance does these security awareness every month. You know, we make those publicly available. We, we share those with the boards. So if you have time, I think they're on the board SharePoint site. Uh, go look at those. You'll learn some each month. This is recorded. If you have any other questions that you didn't get the answer, ask, reach out. We, we can help. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.